What's up, YouTube? I'm back again uploading a few videos and um, yeah, I was away for a while during the holiday season, so no videos on my channel during a pretty long time, except for a recent one about, um, you know, the Formula 1 grid. But well, that's not what we're gonna talk about. Now, I just want to share a few of my techniques, a few a little story of how I was raised as a, as a teenager uh, in a series of three videos. This is part one. And the first is going to cover how to cope with the kind of parents I had. So, how to cope with hyper-severe parents. There is a channel called Brightside that, among other videos, outlines a series of mistakes from parents to avoid if they want to raise their kids correctly. They fail, however, in taking one thing into consideration. Parents that make these mistakes will never, ever accept that they're mistaken. This video is for those children of hyper-severe parents on how to defend yourself against the detrimental effects of having the kind of parent I had. Um, any parents or soon to be parents may want to be careful you raise your kids in a way that they don't have to do any of this for the sake of their development. Of course not all parents are like this and I would never wish upon my worst enemy to have parents like my mom and stepdad as a teenager. These were my coping mechanisms and they worked so well for me that I want to share them with all of you. So let me continue on with my script. You may remember a few videos I did with a script like this in a notebook. The first mistake made by parents is pretending that a child needs to be trained. You have, morally, the same dignity and rights as other family members, but many parents tend to unrecognize the, your rights and structure the house rules such that you have mostly duties and very little rights and any rights you may have could well be short-lived the days might be numbered so enjoy so of course you have to enjoy them while you still can so for example if your parents allow you to say watch TV or play video games or spend some time at the computer doing things other than homework if they are overly strict you can expect those rights to eventually end so you have to enjoy them as much as you can while you still can uh, food rationing for me was never a problem I always had a, the proper amounts of nutritious food a place to sleep clothes to spare you know, the basic needs of every person were always covered. For me, I, I, we, in my family, we never had any economic problems. But my psychological needs at, during my teenage years were always ignored. And apparently this is very common among parents. Uh, and it's also common to give their children a bunch of house chores that at least in my house fell into one of three categories either to benefit our pets like feeding the dogs or setting up a shelter for the turtle using bricks um, for the benefit of the house things like for example doing doing the dishes or carrying groceries from the the car to the shelves and um, the third, and what I think are the most common, and I remember most, are humiliation tasks. You know, you know the, those tasks, things like, for example, at least in my case, uh, my stepdad, my mom's husband, used to force me to read a, cer a certain text about something, and then I must present them, pre present the text properly and with no mistakes or else I would get punished. These types of humiliation tasks may not be um, common, at, le at least not for you, but if you do have them, you, prob you no need to know it is not common and you should expect some uh, psychological damage from all of this. So. But in any case, if, if, if 
this sounds like your parents, you need to keep watching this video. Um, often, all the house tools were assigned to me on the fly and without any uh, regard for what I was doing, what, uh, what I, or anything I had to do, or, you know, and, um, so, all my free time was effectively useless. And my only truly free time was being home alone for a few hours while they went out for dinner with friends or whatever. This time of being home alone was an absolute treasure for me, and it should be for you too, in fact, for everyone. But, for any, but in any case, even in total lack of freedom, you must keep your internal freedom. That is, the kind of freedom you can only give yourself of pursuing happiness even if you're banned from doing it openly. And there's a bunch of things you need to be really careful of when being near your parents. So, yeah. First and foremost, a lot of parents judge their children by their mistakes and ignore their successes. You know that type of parent that says you never do anything right or you don't never think about anything? There is whether the only feedback you can receive from your parents is negative. In their eyes, you're never right. And even if you even you're never right even when you do everything perfectly. From that type of parent, the only feedback you should seek is no feedback at all. That means never requesting any opinion unless it is strictly necessary. And also being aware of the second point. Parents don't ask, they ban. My parents just um, banned, prohibited anything and everything that I did that was fun or allowed me to cope with emotional stress. Ex expect video games, music and TV or the use of your phone to be prohibited for reasons increasingly small and for periods increasingly long. And you may remember Mary Poppins, in any job that must be done there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap the job's a game. Or rather, as soon as you find it, it's immediately detected by your parents and banned. This is especially true for humiliation tasks, and also from Mary Poppins, a bird feathering its nest has very little time to rest, much like the children of overly strict parents. While taking his task, the bird has a merry tune to toot, because he knows that a song will move the job along, but unfortunately your parents also know this, and therefore it should not be surprising if music is banned right off the bat during house chores. This ban may probably extend to carrying any devices that are capable of playing music, like your like your phone or having your or having your um, headphones around your neck. That is well it, it was prohibited for me when I was a teenager. One way to cope with all of this, even if it sounds crazy, is to use your free time to play a song uh, repeatedly over and over and over again until you are capable of taking off your headphones and then playing the song in your head during <laughs> and at any moment. Then, during a humiliation task, just play that song back in your head in a very discreet manner. Just making sure that your parents learn notice because yeah if they notice you like singing even even very very quietly you will get in very serious trouble next thing to be careful of is how to manage punishment threats so for example i'll take it i will take your phone away if you don't start cleaning your room usually the next step the next thing to do after the punishment threat is to make us a full enjoyment of, in this case, your phone. It doesn't matter how well you clean your room because of the judgment based exclusively on mistakes. You will be punished anyway, so at times it pays off to just keep calm and carry on. 
any effort to avoid punishment is futile. All punishment threats that aren't empty threats will result in punishment without you being able to do anything about it. Next mechanism, self-esteem and selective deafness. Every time you are getting a long talk, it often does just fine to give robotic answers while using the previously mentioned, te mentioned technique of playing back songs in your head. Remember that anything you say can and will be used against you. So it is best to give yes and no answers to everything and just repeat what you are asked to repeat. Any punishment threat will just indicate what activity or object you should it should be taken or used with special enjoyment later and any punishment declaration should be taken as coming anyway remember that in that to your parents you're always wrong so don't feel bad about anything that they say it's impossible to never make any mistakes and parents judge only by mistakes part two of this series will go into further detail on that one finally hide everything everything valuable to you if something is fun to do do it hiding even if you think it's legal in some house rules there's no such thing as a loophole um, something being enjoyable is often enough reason for that thing to be banned immediately or become vulnerable to punishment and don't be surprised if the spiral of discipline keeps going down at the end of, 20, uh, of 2012, I was 15 years old, I faced a logical and obvious end to the dis discipline spiral. The beginning of permanent punishment. This may end up being your uh, the, the fate of all your rights. I was finally forbidden permanently from listening to music. My desktop computer was taken out of my room, uh, not the background I'm, uh, I moved since. Um, my phone was taken away by my mom and the only times I was allowed to use my, my devices freely was during vacation when school was out. Two suicide attempts later, the punishment was lifted in June of 2014, being lasted a year, being, having lasted a year and a half. It should be noted that if you face permanent punishment, even if it is eventually lifted after multiple times being told by a psychologist that it's not okay to punish for extended periods of time, do not ever expect apologies or even acknowledgement of wrongdoing from your parents even years after they become soon the supporting parents of an adult. And yeah, and before I go, before the video ends, what can you expect from the aftermath of having hyper severe parents like mine being always told you're wrong being constantly humiliated basically not having the chance to be a real teenager will have one of two outcomes depending on whether or not you fight back you will either become severely mentally ill and vulnerable to alcoholism or you'll become a rebel unprepared to face the real world with anything except for not giving a shit or fighting back on everything. In both cases, you may become unemployable later in life because you'd be competing for every single job imaginable against people who had a healthy development. It will be next to impossible for the teenage child of hyper severe parents to grow up into fully functioning adults, at least not without help. Um, so, yeah, that will is kind of a bummer. You can, I suggest you stay tuned for uh, part two of this video series on hyper severe parents. And until then, thank you very much for watching and have a really nice one.